guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tara. I am an incoming pediatric intern this year, and I am also a musician, and I make videos on the internet, and I'd like to help you guys out by sharing my experiences as a IMG in medicine. Um, and this video is all about my experience taking the USMLE Step 3 this summer. Uh, if you like videos like this, please give it a like and hit subscribe. I post new videos all the time, and I can't wait to get into this video, so let's go. So first, I wanna talk a little bit about what is the USMLE Step 3 exam. So the USMLE Step 3 is the third installment, third installment of the USMLE exams. There used to be four, um, however, one of the exams was discontinued due to COVID, so now there is only three. Now, I've done kind of a big overview of all of the USMLE exams, so if you want kind of an overview of all of the exams, uh, I would go check out that video. This video specifically is about my experience taking the USMLE Step 3. So the USMLE Step 3 is the third and final United States Medical Licensing exam, and the content on this exam is more centered around the content that you'll kind of be expected to know as a intern or incoming resident um, at the end of your first year of residency. Now, you might be wondering, wait a minute, pause, Tara, I thought you said you were an incoming pediatric resident, meaning you haven't started yet. That is also true. You can take the USMLE Step 3 anytime after you've graduated until the end of your first year of residency. For me, as a requirement for the visa that my program wants me to come on, I have to have taken the USMLE Step 3, which is why I sat it earlier than most other residents would normally take this exam. Um, that's why I took it early. But back to the content of this exam in general, so it kind of, the content covers what you're kind of gonna see in your first year of residency and what they want you to know for that. It's broken up over two days. Day one is kind of the more unpredictable day. It's the day that covers anything from biostats to uh, kind of mechanisms of actions of medications to what would you do next type questions. Um, I found day one to be much more unpredictable than day two. Day two centers around kind of clinical material, like patient comes in with X, what is the next best step? kind of questions were very common on day two. Um, and then day two also has a new component to the USMLE that USMLE test takers from USMLE step one and step two CK wouldn't recognize, which are called CCS cases, which are simulated cases where you're given a patient and you get to order tests and do procedures online in kind of a virtual chart. And then the patient situation evolves as the case goes on based on what you do. Um, that's a totally new environment for most people who've taken USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 CK. So it's a different beast to prepare for. The FSMB or the kind of, the FSMB are the people who you register for the USMLE Step 3 through. It's not done through ECFMG and OASIS like other IMGs would be aware of. So that's just one thing to be aware of. And they have really great articles on what makes you eligible, what you have to do to register. So I would refer to those articles and I'll link their website down below that has all of that information. The next thing I think we should talk about is study materials. The USMLE step one is the most study material heavy. You're using every single study material in the book. By the time you get to USMLE step three, you only need a few study materials to get through this exam. In my experience, I used UWorld as kind of the gold standard question bank. That really helped me out. Then I used ccscases.com, which is a, another online platform that helps you study for that new CCS cases portion. Now UWorld has a CCS cases component. However, I really didn't like that it didn't give me feedback. I'd get to the end of the case and then I'd have to read the case summary and then I'd have to remember, oh, in the past 20 minutes, did I order that test? I don't remember. It doesn't give me feedback on whether or not I ordered the right test or I was doing all of the required steps at the right times. CCScases.com does that for you. It tells you 
if you're using the right tests, if you're over testing, under testing, if you're doing too intense of a procedure, if it gives you all sorts of feedback. It tells you if you left them in the ER for too long versus you should have moved them to the inpatient floor or sent, sent them home. So CCS cases is really great for that. And I think it's a must have if you're studying for the USMLE step three. Now, other resources that I used, but maybe not as fully, were the uh, was an Anki deck by Hoop and Ruck on Reddit. I will also link it down below so that you guys can find it. I used it for a while. However, because I was studying for this exam while also being in my final year of medical school and studying for my kind of RCSI finals, it was a lot to process all at once and flashcards aren't necessarily the way that I know that I learn best. I know that they're a supplement to my learning, but they're not the best way that I know I learn personally. So I did some of the high yield sections from the decks, but I didn't do every single flashcard. If you're a flashcard person, there are lots of decks available online that you can kind of immerse yourself in over kind of studying for the USMLE step three that may or may not work for you. If you have a flashcard deck that you love for USMLE Step 3, link it down below for other people so that they can see what worked for you and how you liked it. The last thing I'll mention is Online Med Ed, which Online Med Ed, a lot of people will be familiar with its uses for studying for USMLE Step 2 CK. However, I also found it really helpful for USMLE Step 3. Now, I didn't go back and watch every single video. Some people do that and love it, and that's what worked for them. I found that if I was having trouble with a particular section of the exam, like for example, I was struggling with endocrine disorders that had to do with the adrenals, like your Cushing's and your Cons, I was struggling with that initially at some point during my studying. So what I decided to do was just rewatch those particular videos. So if I was having, if I was noticing in my question taking that I was having trouble with those particular areas, I would go back and watch a video on that topic. And that I found to be more efficient, especially when I was running short on time. Next, I want to talk about my test day tips. So the USMLE step three, day one is about six hours and day two is about nine hours. It's a beast of an exam and it's over two days, which none of the USMLEs have done before. Day one is going to feel like it goes by really quickly. And what I found worked for me was if I did two blocks back to back, took a break and then did a break after each block. I always go into my USMLE exams with lots of water and lots of snacks and tea in a thermos. However, you should go to your particular test centers, your particular Prometrics website to determine what is going to be available to you and what the rules are at your particular test site with beverages, food, and COVID restrictions. So my next test day tip I would say would be give yourself enough time between day one and day two. I found that when, from my research, three to five days is what people recommended. Per the rules of the exam, you can't have a break between day one and day two that's more than 14 days. I thought that was way too long for me. Um, so I went with the first available date that was more than a day away because they had a couple of dates that were back to back. So the closest I could do was six days. And I found that worked for me. I I took the day off before and after, so I took the day off after day one and I took the day off before day two, didn't do any studying on those days, slept, watched TV, called my boyfriend, all of that stuff. So that gave me four solid days of studying in the middle where I could focus on studying, but I didn't feel kind of stressed about cramming everything in. Those are kind of my, my main test day tips that revolve around kind of bring your snacks, be hydrated, nice and relaxed, and scheduling your test appropriately so you have enough time. So now I'm going to reveal my USMLE Step 3 results. Uh, if you want the results of my USMLE Step 1 and Step 2, I did those in my match day reveal video, which I will link above. So without further Further ado, my USMLE Step 3 score was 232, which is uh, above average, uh, which I was very, very happy with. And it's above a passing score, which means I passed the exam, I did well, um, and I was really happy.
happy with it, especially because I felt like I needed to work a lot harder because I wasn't coming in with that base knowledge of being an intern for a year. So now I just get to wait for my visa here uh, in Canada and I get to spend time with my family. Um, if you have any questions about my experience at the USMLE Step 3, please put them down in the comment section below. If you like videos like this, give this a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notifications when I post new videos. I post new tunes with Tara every single Sunday and IMG Tales is a bit more sporadic, but um, they kind of come out as I have things to talk to you about. So if you have ideas for other videos, please leave them down in the comments and I can make those videos for you now that I've got a little bit of time to relax and decompress before I start my intern year of residency. So until next time, I'll see you guys all later. Bye guys.